All right, what we're going to look at here is a way to calculate volumes of solids that are generated by taking a region that's bounded by a curve or curves and revolving them about the x-axis. Okay, so here we have a problem. The region, um, this is the curve y equals 4x minus x cubed. We're going to take the region bounded by it in the x-axis and revolve it about the x-axis to form a solid. And we want to know what's the volume of that solid. So when we were doing areas, what we would do is we would draw a rectangle, and so there's our rectangle, and we would add up the areas of those rectangles as the width of the rectangles went to zero. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, instead of adding up the areas of the rectangle, we're going to take this rectangular region and revolve it about the x-axis to form a disk. And so there's the, our disk. And then in order to estimate if we wanted to estimate, if in order to estimate the volume of our figure, what we would do is we would construct lots and lots of these little disks, find their individual volumes, and add up their volumes. So here's another typical disk. There's the, um, I guess, the rectangle that we're going to revolve. We revolve the rectangle about the x-axis, and that's the disk we would form. And if we glue all of these disks together and let the size or the thickness of the disks go to zero, we're going to get a solid figure, which looks something like this. So that's what our solid figure is going to look like. All right, so now, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, here, once again, is our picture. We need to find the volume of this disk. Okay. Well, the thickness of the disk we're going to treat as our dx. And in order to find the volume, I need to multiply the thickness of the disk by the area of the cross-section. Okay. So how am I going to find the area? Well, in order to do that, I need to figure out what the radius is. Because it's a circular region, it's going to be pi times the radius squared. Well, my radius is just the function value. We're going from 0 up to 4x minus x cubed. So the volume of a disk is going to be pi times my radius squared times the thickness, which is dx. Plug all that in. We get 4x minus x cubed. We're going to square that. Now, when we found the areas of regions bounded, we transformed these little snapshots of the, of the quantities we were calculating and added them up. We did that through integration, and so we're going to integrate this thing from 0 to 2 in order to uh, find the volume. So the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 2, pi times my radius squared times dx. And we don't really need to dwell on the mechanics of evaluating this integral, but what we would do is we would expand the square out, which becomes, becomes uh, 16x squared minus 8x to the fourth plus x to the sixth, evaluate it using our traditional methods, and we find out that the volume of that solid figure will be 1024 pi over 105. So our next example, um, we're going to have something of a hole in our graph. Oh, before we do that, um, this is our general formula that we're going to end up using and we'll adapt it as necessary. Um, but it's going to be pi times my radius squared. My radius will typically be my function, but again, if we have holes in it like we're going to see in a moment, um, we'll have to do something different. So it's pi times the radius squared times the thickness of our disk, which is dx. So our second example, we're going to take the region bounded by two curves, here the square root of x, and also this line where i equals 1 half x, and revolve it about the x-axis, which will leave, you can see here in this region, a little cone that will be bored out of this bowl that we have. Okay, so how will we do that? Well, instead of doing disks, we do what are called washers. So what we'll do is we'll take an ordinary disk that will extend up to the um, top curve, which is y equals the square root of x, and then we'll bore out of it a hole which will um, have a radius equal to y equals 1 half x. So in order to find the volume, we'll do the same maneuver we did before, but we'll subtract the volume of the outer disk uh, minus the volume of the inner disk. So the volume of the washer is going to be pi times the outer radius times the thickness minus pi times the inner radius times the thickness. And in order to make things nice and pretty, it's easy to factor out the pi and the dx. 
in order to add them up. In our case, we're going to have the pi and the dx on the front and the back end. Notice our limits go from 0 to 4 because that's where those two intersect. And we square our radii. Okay, again, a little bit of work. Uh, the square root of x squared becomes x. 1 half x quantity squared becomes x squared over 4. We integrate. I'm not going to dwell on those details. And it turns out that the volume of that creature is 8 thirds pi.